you're actually charging the battery by drifting. Exactly. That's the most AMG thing I've ever heard, I think. <laughs> Hi and welcome everyone to the latest episode of Inside AMG where it's going to be all about the future of driving performance. Today we're going to dive deep into the technical details that will define our future with two experts. And there we already have the first one, Dennis, hi. Hi Felix, good to see you. Good to see you too. Now Jochen already told me a few things about this very special piece of equipment that we got here, our very own high performance battery. Now I understood this is not a conventional hybrid battery, what exactly makes this battery so special? This is completely different. This is something what we developed um, with our colleagues at HPP in, in Brixworth. So we try to set the uh, Formula One technology into a serial car production. And that's something what, is, what makes it completely different to every battery you know maybe on the market at the moment. If you take a close look at the, at the cell itself, for example. This looks like a regular battery that you would use for a flashlight, I mean, uh, well, it's not only the battery, but this is one point, one, one key fact that we developed a, a, different, a different cell. Yeah. This one is especially made for more power. So our target is to have the maximum peak power what we can achieve in such a, a small battery. So this one is very special. If you combine it with this battery strategy, what we have and the, the temperature and the cooling, then it will be completely different. So that makes the difference actually. And then you take one of these contraptions here and then you just stuff a bunch of cells in there. Exactly. We use 40 cells for each cell frame. And then we use 14 of these cell frames. Ah. And then we get 560 cells on the inside of this battery. 560 cells leads us to a, a voltage of more than 400 volts. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get out of this system 150 kilowatt. 150 kilowatts. Exactly, in peak power. That is huge in such a small battery pack. I mean, this is still not that big a battery for in terms of a hybrid battery. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that was another target of us. To, to get the high power density, we are not only focused on the power, we also need to reduce the weight as much as possible. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this housing here is a housing made of thin walls um, of sand casting. Mm -hmm. And this helps us to reduce the weight to 89 kilogram. What do we have here? I mean, there is a lot going on in this part as well. Oh, well, th this is um, actually the brain of the system. This okay. is the intelligence. This is where the um, battery management system is. Oh. So this is where we measure everything, where we see what is the voltage of the of the system, what is the current, what we what we have uh, and put through the system. This is where we measure actually everything, mm -hmm. but also it's a compartment for the uh, cooling. So there is a some sort of cooling liquid in there or how do you do that? Exactly. This is a non-conductive uh, liquid cooling. <laughs> so this chamber right here where the cells are is completely flooded with, with uh, special fluid. And, and with this one, we can cool down the battery and set the temperature at the right spot where we need to have it. That's crazy. I never heard anybody do that before. Even in a serial production, we have never seen something like this before. And with this internal cooling mechanism, you always operate within the perfect temperature range. Exactly. What we said is um, 45 degrees is the perfect temperature of mm -hmm. each cell in our system. And therefore, we try to keep every single cell at that temperature. On a standard battery, that's completely different. This is something what I can show you on the video screen right here. Ah, okay. So if you um, consider a standard battery, actually, if the, the cells meet the 60 degrees, every other battery will stop, actually. They will go down with the power to save the structure, save the cells, save everything of the system, and then you lose your power. Mm -hmm. But that's nothing what we want to do. What we want to do is completely different. Ah, that's right. what I said, but that's something you will just get with the direct cool system. Yeah, you can take in power, take out power, and you're always within the perfect temperature range. Exactly. What we have, what I didn't show you on the, on the battery, is the heat exchanger. Ah, this part okay. which is divided red and, and, and blue, ah. this is our heat exchanger where we um, get the heat out of the system actually and transfer it to the vehicle system. Mm -hmm. And then that helps us that we keep the battery uh, temperature at this 45 degrees. 
And like you said, we can use the battery not only for taking the power out, but also to put the power in. And that's all the time. It's always on. That's why you use the F1 analogy. This is basically motorsports technology, exactly what you would want on the racetrack. Always have the power when you need it. Exactly. That's, that's the big point what we want to have with this battery. And the strategy, how that works, that's something what Jochen can maybe tell us and he will help you with the strategy of the yeah. system. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Jochen, hi. Nice hi. to see you. How's it going? Fine, thanks. We got some pretty nice equipment here. Um, I've already learned that hardware-wise we're in tip-top shape, but I've already learned that it requires uh, an, a specific operational strategy to get everything going. What is that exactly? If you consider the internal combustion engine the heart of the AMG, the operation strategy will be the brain ah. of the whole powertrain system. And the driver still has control by using different settings, I suppose of the system, right? Right. You already know from our conventional models, there are some drive programs like C, S, S+. In this system, we're able to drive fully electric. And we want to give ah. the customer the opportunity to drive in complete silent mode. If you're starting in the morning and you don't want to disturb anybody or wake up, so you can go fully electric. Ah, so we got the new bespoke electric drive program for electric driving and then you move onwards through the drive modes, comfort, sport, sport plus and so on. How does the operational strategy change through those modes? We'll talk about first the C mode, our most efficient mode and therefore the most high sophisticated mode as well because you're, this is the only mode where the operation strategy automatically will change from pure electric driving to combined driving and to boost mode. Ah, so this all happens automatically in the background, in the comfort mode. The driver doesn't have to do anything. The system selects for itself the most efficient mode to move forward. You're just driving and the system in the background always will use the most efficient way to get you from A to B. Ah, that's very handy. And then, of course, you move onward to more sporty driving, which is, of course, where it gets interesting for us. For performance hybrid, of course, the sporty ones are the most important for many of our customers. So we focused on that a lot. When you move up from C to S or even higher, the ice will never stop. So it will continuously be able to provide you the whole system power from the electric side and from the combustion side. Ah, so that's the always on strategy. We have always, we always have the internal combustion engine on and the whole system activated. Exactly. So this is the other part of always on. The one is the part where you never lose power on the electric system. And the other one is you don't want to stop the ice. Ah. Because if you always have the combination of electric motor and the combustion components, you are all set for getting drive off. And then you get into that groove of always getting power in and out of the battery with each move you make with your, with your feet on the pedals, basically, right? Exactly. And then we're coming to a special feature. We're putting in this P3 powertrain first, the selectable recovery system. Ah. So you're able to select the level of recovery you want to get from the electrical system. And therefore, we're able to provide from sailing till one pedal drive for the customer a wide range of possibility how we use the acceleration pedal or the brake pedal so perhaps you know from BHEV cars mm. if you lift your foot from the acceleration pedal there will be a massive drag mm -hmm. that charges the battery of course but will slow you down and if you want this feeling and you like it you can have this with a P3 e-performance version as well. I have to say both ends of this spectrum are very interesting to drive. The one pedal drive you mentioned, but also the sailing side of things, you lift your foot off the pedal and you just sail on like nothing happens. And you can experience both ends of the spectrum with the P3 hybrid concept. So is there any uh, specific thing that changes when you then move onward from Sport Plus to say race to the sharpest program we got? At this we define very closely together with our colleagues from the racetrack. Ah. So the race drivers, especially 
design with us the features of the e-performance system on the race driving mode. Awesome, so this is real motorsports know-how that went into that drive mode, straight from the racetrack through our racing drivers. Exactly, and there are two main goals we want to achieve. The one is preciseness. Mm -hmm. So if you're driving round corners, you have to brake, you need to be precise. So we want to reduce the drag torque we already spoke about, and we only give the driver the full control of the recuperative and the friction braking system on the brake pedal. Oh. So there will be no drag torque, first. Second, when you go out the corner, you want to have precisely always the same power and the linearity of your acceleration pedal allowing you perfectly drive off every corner and accelerate in the optimum way. I mean, that's completely logical. Yeah, it would be probably very irritating for a race driver to take his foot off the accelerator and then the car immediately slows you down without you touching the brake. But that you achieve this continuous force of recuperative braking and regular braking just throughout the whole way of the braking pedal, that is revolutionary. You will not get any hint where the recuperative um, braking is ending and the friction braking is taking over because we're starting with friction braking on a very, very low level. So we're not losing energy and keeping efficiency of the recuperative system very high. And then when we're coming to the point where the battery or the e-system is limiting us, so we're handing over to the friction, is all one control strategy in one brake system. So this will not hand over from one to one and there will be some lag or anything. So but it will just go the all way from zero to hero. That is amazing stuff. So you always put power back into the battery, no matter what you do, some way it finds its way back into the system. Exactly, we will not waste energy because efficiency and recuperation is also the main strategy to faster lap times. Pretty cool. Are there any other ways you can get more power into the system, back into the system and not waste it? one Easter egg out of the software development. Um, if you're perhaps drifting, you're also being able to recuperate. So we use the electric system to slow down or take the load out of the ice, putting it in the battery, and then if the slippery condition is over, the ice is already on full load and you can accelerate much, much faster. And while drifting, you were able to recharge the battery. <laughs> So you're telling me not only does the IC not cut down the power, but you're actually charging the battery by drifting. Exactly. That's the most AMG thing I've ever heard, I think. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. Thank you very much for these very interesting insights. Um, I've learned that if we do a hybrid, we do it the AMG way, definitely. That was very, very interesting. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. So if you guys liked what you've seen today, don't forget to drop us a like. Also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video whenever we upload new content. Today we've learned a lot about the future of driving performance. So there are definitely a lot of interesting new products right around the corner. Stay tuned for that. Also stay tuned for more videos. Comment down below what you would like us to shoot next. So until the next one, bye bye.